Good evening. How are you? Chrissy, Veronica, I love this. Thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate this. It's another great day in the neighborhood. Hopefully it is in your world too. I'm sorry I have issues with this crazy camera, so just run with me, okay? I operate from an iPad rather than a computer. I haven't been on a computer in seven years now. EMFs and all those good things, so iPads work. So I, my invitation to everybody that is joining us tonight is to please interact, add questions. I've got some ideas of where the topic's going to be. Robin, thanks for being here. I love this. Some of my friends coming over from TikTok. I love it. Well, you know, we're starting fresh over here, so I really appreciate you guys. So I've got a couple things lined up. And again, I would invite you all to send questions. I really appreciate that. I love, I love this. Robin, thank you. Give me goosebumps. Thanks for being here. And Chrissy, I love this. I've got some, I pulled some cards ahead of time just because uh, I don't normally use cards when I do readings. However, I thought it'd be fun to do group cards for the week and set up some kind of intention for everyone so that everybody can actively participate in positive things. We're going to do that. And then I also want to share that I have in the background going on through the, out the hour there. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps on this too. I'm playing all the nine solfeggio. Oh, you got a dick. Good job. Solfeggio frequencies for emotional support to help clean out all the chakras. So we've got that playing also in the background. Tracy, you're here. I love this. Thanks guys for being here. I appreciate everybody who is here tonight. So I'm going to pull a deck, uh, pull a card from one of the decks, and then we're going to get into the topic that I created today because I don't know about you, for those out there in this crazy world having to wear masks, I feel like we're all within a maze and a labyrinth. So we will get into that. But first of all, I want to share the cards that I pulled just because I want to set the tone for everyone out there. It doesn't matter where you are. This is a, a frequency to help set a, a focus for you for this next week. So from this moment through the next week and through our full moon, I'd like to pull, I've got a really fun de deck called the Crystal Oracle. And again, I don't normally use decks of cards. I use these for fun in my retreats and for individuals who want to use them. However, I thought it'd be really fun to share this with the group. So mind me, I have to have glasses. So for today through the next Monday, because that's when I will have my next live, I pulled the stone, uh, stone, well, that there are stones on this tumbled stones and what this is all about is rainbow healing okay so think about that in terms of yourself rainbow healing to really activate then i'll read the card activate within yourself rainbow of course activates all of the chakras within you and then above and below and then the opportunity to connect in with the gemstones as well is a great opportunity to really kick out some old dust within your system so this is what it says about tumbled stones, rainbow healing. Today marks the start of a new beginning, a new way of looking at life in the world around you. I'm gonna segue folks, this is a fantastic thing. We are being bombarded by so much negativity, so much dark nonsense, if you wanna call it that, I call it nonsense, that each of us has to have the power within ourselves to pull strength, to come in at the, the darkness from a place of light within ourselves. So is this exciting? Today marks the start of a new beginning, a new way of looking at life and the world around you. So my invitation to everybody is to really tap into this, okay? Now, the next part of this is be it in dreams or through beautiful rainbows, you are being infused with light and blessings relax okay everybody this and thanks to everybody for joining me on this this is my third time of being live on facebook it's a whole new interface for me for those who know me i've been on tiktok this is new so i appreciate everybody's patience on this so back to this the big thing here is relax everybody is so uptight so stressed so fearful i talked to a friend of mine today that is on the opposite side of the fence on this than I am. She is incredibly fearful and talking to her, trying to bring her out of that darkness is not an easy task. So this is my invitation. Everybody here wants to learn. Everybody here also is, getting, okay, I'm getting goosebumps, folks. 
are light workers. You're all light workers. So your job, whether you decide to accept it, is to be the light in the world and to put forth that relaxing energy. You have to go within yourself and relax. And from there, again, I'm just getting major goosebumps. You guys are an amazing group to get this many goosebumps. It's been warm here today. As you can tell, I've got a tank top on. So again, as you as light workers out there in the field, your job right now more than anything is to deeply breathe and relax. Breathing that rainbow energy down through the chakras and then tap into that calm within yourself and then most of all take the action and share that with other people okay because uh, i haven't turned on the news today i don't know about you uh maybe you have maybe you haven't but it's it's debilitating it it takes you down and the most important thing is again to breathe relax and share what you know to be true in your heart and this does not include fearfulness this does not include negativity this does not come from a place of love think about it I live in the Northwest we have been inundated with BLM and Antifa I don't care how you feel but the truth the truth on that that is not coming from a place of love anything that is not coming from a place of love really in my view doesn't have any space in my thought process so my invitation to all of you is the same thing come from a place of love within your heart now I'm going to continue Surround your concerns to the universal light of love and allow this wondrous healing to occur. This is fantastic. I don't know about anybody out there, but I'm assuming, I should never assume, starts with ask, but we all have some level within ourselves that needs to be healed. So this is a great opportunity in this next week to really focus on yourself, go within yourself, and do some meditative healing, relax, and then share that with the world. This is the next piece. You will soon find that others are attracted to you. Many will come and seek your help and advice, for you are a beacon of light unto all. In the near future, you will empower others with your love and wisdom as you help them see their own inner light and beauty. You are a natural-born healer who heals through the power of love. Okay, everybody in this chat right now, that applies to all 83 of you. Well, we now have 80, but you get the point. Everybody in this chat right now is a light worker. And this is your invitation to really tap into your healing within yourself, physically, mentally, and emotionally, spiritually, and then help those around you by sharing your love, sharing your light, and sharing the positive energy that is available to all of us. Because again, we're going to tap into this whole concept of being a rat in a maze because there's definitely an element of that going on. But before I get there, we're going to go to the next one. Now, we do have a full moon this week. So we're going to read the full moon energy because I think this is really important. The full moon is on the 1st, which is Thursday. So here's the, the concept of the full moon. And again, opportunity, folks. Always tap into the opportunities that are around you. The opportunity this week is to surrender to the divine. Okay? The very word climax brings all sorts of ideas and images to mind. Agreed? But it really is the feeling of this card. Life is coming to a head, a point, a conclusion, or a turning point. There may be some kind of change and possibly even some sort of emotional explosion. Now, what's fascinating about this, I did not read these before I tapped into this show. I did a, a some channeling last night. I don't like to call it channeling. I just tap into my higher self. And what's interesting is that what I picked up on is that it was like uh, that we are at this place like a champagne bottle and that the cork is ready to explode. And this is not just here in the United States. This is a global explosion because people are not liking being in the maze anymore. They're not liking being in the trap or they are so filled with fear then they feel safe the rest of us are ready to explode but explode with a positive energy a positive reaffirming of where we want to be and what we want to do on the planet so I love this that this mirrors what I got last night again I did not read this until right now actually this is a newer deck I have never really looked at it before for those who are interested it is the moon is that backwards to you probably this is the moonology oracle deck it was a gift and I have not used it much. Again, I don't use cards, but these are fun for this kind of uh, opportunity. So tune into your emotions now and see what they're telling you. They're very likely close to the surface, 
no matter when in the moon cycle you've pulled this card. Okay, I'm going to ask this to everybody. I realize you can't answer me. I do ask, though, that you do send me questions and things like that. I love the interaction. I don't know about you. However, I have had my emotions very close to the surface. And this is mirroring this, too. Of course, the energy of the moon can amplify the emotions. We're going to talk about the moon when I'm done with this in just a second. So my invitation, if this has really been the case for you, that your emotions have been really close to that, the, the, almost like at, at your skin level, right? Where you're just, you can look at somebody sideways and you start to cry. My invitation to you is process it. Find out where those emotions are settled, where they are in your body. Find out what the emotional reason might be, the unsettling, the fear, the the. See, there's a right there. Chrissy says very close. Absolutely. It's because, again, we've got all this external nonsense that's happening us, happening to the world. And then we have to look at it from another perspective so that it's not happening to us. It's outside of us. That nonsense that we are experiencing is in the orbit of Pluto so that we can then handle our emotions from a very positive, loving way. So my invitation, which is just a fun way of segueing out of the negativity is to pull up a very fun, happy movie that has emotion in it that makes you laugh and cry so you can purge some of those emotions that have been sitting right on the surface because I know I am not alone. I've talked to a lot of clients. I've talked to friends and family that feel the same way. So my invitation is to process, okay? The more we all process, because remember, I've said this a million times with the people have heard me before, it always starts with us. Until we start with our own emotional shifting and changing and our own expansive growth, nothing changes. We can't blame others. It's all within ourselves. Okay, now, matters will soon conclude and you will find out whether or not your wishes are going to come true. The odds are in your favor as this is a positive card, but you may need to work harder than usual to keep cool as events unfold. Well, isn't that the truth, folks? We have to stay cool because we are essentially a month away from the election. And for those of us here in the United States, it's crazy, Bill. It's just literally crazy, Bill. Maybe not in your state. Our state has been a bit nuts. The whole West Coast is rather upside down. So again, invitation to utilize this time to really process and tap into both of those messages for the weak healing rainbow colors within and then tap into that emotion that's within you that needs to come out let it come out so you can be happier lighter brighter okay very fun now on a segue i said i was going to talk about the moon i don't know if any of you have heard this and this is really not well i guess it kind of fits into the topic of rats in a cage i don't know if you've heard that NASA, this goes back to NASA, this isn't the conspiracy stuff, but I can go there too, is that they dropped an object high in the sky and dropped it on the moon and it rang hollow and that it's actually starting to rust the moon because there are pieces of it that are uh, literally rusting because the moon is not a planet, it's not a rock, it's a ship of some sort. Now that may be a stretch for some of you, but I highly invite you to think about this and that it's been here in our cycle for a long time. However, it's maybe not what we think it is. So again, back to rats in a box. Back in the, oh golly, don't quote me on this, 70s, 80s, there was a great book written, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And you're going, okay, Candy, how does that have any relevance to what we're gonna talk about? Well. The opening page is so funny, it just takes you in, and it's very reminiscent of Rats in a Cage. And that is Arthur Dent, our main protagonist, gets scooped off the planet as the planet implodes, making way for a super highway. Okay, and then his, he and his buddy Ford Perf Perfect take off into the galaxy, and one of their main, <laughs> their main lessons is always carry a towel. Well, the reason I bring this up, because I feel that on so many levels, the world in which we live is an illusion. Now we hear about this in terms of the different religions, the Maya, the illusion, 
our dreams are more real reality than what we have in waking state okay there's truth in that too however i think there's a, a bigger piece at play here in terms of the maze the labyrinth in which we live i've heard this more than once that in so many ways we are an experiment we the human race are an experiment we are an experiment to see how we will do with our free will now i don't know about you but i'm gonna throw that out at all of you how do you feel that humanity is done with its free will i mean how many world wars have we had how many times have we had civilizations that have come and gone right the ones that we know about uh, going back in time, we go back to the Lemurians, no longer here, the Atlanteans, no longer here. Then we are in the cycle that we are, and we have come very close to blowing ourselves up a few times. Again, free will. And fortunately, we have higher dimensional beings. They're not going to allow that to happen. But we have been this experiment to see how well we do with our freedom, with our free will with our thought processes how how close are we to circling into the concept of love and into the the greater and I feel like people are as well are bad but the people isn't really good if that makes any sense thank you Robin for that comment I'm sure everybody can see that and there's truth in that because again we as a species have been an experiment for those who are unaware we have been spliced and diced literally about 220,000 years ago there is an x chromosome you can read about this i am not an expert in this aspect i'm when it comes to me i'm i'm the very you know spiritual metaphysical person when it comes to facts and figures i'm pretty good but i didn't create this by this around yes so back at 220,000 years ago we have in our genome an x chromosome that has been put in and the only way it could have happened was spliced in through some kind of experiment okay to upgrade us again an experiment we are an experiment now, does this piss me off no have i known about this for a long time yes sorry i'm going to turn this down one notch and my music just got a little louder not that that's not good because music is good for all of us because these are the sofagio sofagio tunes that clear out our chakras but think about this. It's a very interesting concept that we have been living in an isolated lab, <laughs> an isolated lab for some time now to see what we would do as humanity. So we are at this turning point where we have an opportunity to step out of that rat maze, to step out of the labyrinth. Now, here's one for you. I looked up the difference. Do anybody know the difference between a labyrinth and a maze? Because we use these words synonymously, right? Well, the labyrinth basically has one way in, whereas a maze has many multiple options and directions. And to me, that makes it a lot more fun. So my invitation is for you to start going back to visualizing, visualizing every day, visualizing all of us being in a maze. However, we're all supporting one another now. We're su supporting and loving each other now in this maze instead of fighting too many rats in a box, too many rats in a maze, rats turn on themselves. And this is not about depopulation, folks. This is about awareness, okay? Because there is definitely that agenda today of being uh, depopulating the, pop uh, the planet, and I totally disagree with that. This is about recognizing that we are here to support each other, to love each other, and we have free will. So... Imagine yourself in a maze, and it's pretty easy to do if you think about it, and you're going through turning left and turning right, a brick wall, have to turn around and keep going. Well, what if we change the rules? What if we change the cosmic rules, and we then create ladders or build ladders or lift each other up to the top of the walls, and then we can see our way out of the maze, and then when we do that, when we actually take that spiritual step in awareness, Guess what happens? The walls disappear. They literally dissolve. And when that happens, we are then actively in the field of potentiality. What does that mean? The field of potentiality is when we step into the alignment with ourselves, with our soul, with our mind, with our body, because the body is part of it, it is our avatar, and we tap into the field of consciousness where anything and everything is possible. 
The key, of course, is most of us are still stuck in the maze and we forget that the field is just right beyond our, our gaze if we just get above the fray. How many of you right now, I'm going to let you think about this, how many of you are stuck down in the fray? For example, like my girlfriend today, she's in a job right now within the educational system and totally has consumed the Kool-Aid. For those of you that don't know the story of Kool-Aid, that goes back to Jonestown, back in Guyana, back in the 70s, when supposedly there were, I don't know how many hundreds killed, that they drank the Kool-Aid, right? And because they followed a guy by the name of Jim Jones, and that's where consuming the Kool-Aid comes from. So here's a little inside scoop on that. Okay, this is really fascinating. This is the dark side of history. That at Jonestown, don't worry, I'll come back to the maze because that's my topic, but I have to follow these thoughts, these train of thought, is that in Guyana, when it happened, when they actually went in and found all the dead people from con supposedly consuming the Kool-Aid at Jonestown, they actually only found three people that had done the deed, had actually killed themselves. The rest of them, they all found needle marks in from the back on one of their arms. So somebody else came in and killed everybody else. And there is a story that goes out that those that escaped actually were killed by dark agents of the CIA. Okay, great intel, right? So why, was, why am I telling all this? Because there's a story that goes back to being in the maze, that, the, that what we've been told by the news and by the media, by politicians, by leaders, aren't necessarily the truth. The most important thing right now is for everybody to be discerning and to follow the leads, follow the literally the markers out there and doing your own investigative work. That's why being in the maze is something to really recognize that we deal with on a regular basis. So back to consuming the Kool-Aid, right? You're in the, the maze and you're down in the trenches. Have you consumed that, that Kool-Aid of fear? Again, I want you to all visualize. I actually will be quiet, I promise, <laughs> is to have everybody take a deep breath and just visualize yourself within that maze and then you find a path to the top of it. And then I want you to look north because it's always in our, in our mind, you know, finding our north star. Look to the north in your mind and see that field. And beyond the field is the ocean, the ocean of emotion, okay? So look to that field and that's where we're all heading. So I'm gonna take, okay, a few seconds to be quiet because once I get going, I keep going. So take the time to just see yourself out of the fray, out of the fear, out of the negativity, out of the nonsense. Now from the top of this maze, you see the walls and the walls are wide enough for all of us to walk on, right? And we're, we're all behind each other and we've got a few ahead and there are a few of us behind, but think about it. Imagine if all of the light workers did this. All of the light workers were on top of the maze and they saw beyond this complex that has been constructed for our development, for our expansion. And we see all of those within the rat trap, within the maze that are still stuck and trapped and blocked with fear. Well, just imagine if we all take the time to let those walls dissolve excuse me, and we all gather hands, we are then the greeters and the way shores for those that make their way through the maze. Now, this is really an important aspect of this because I'm sure a lot of you that are tuning into me, and I, again, I'm very grateful to everybody being here, is that you're hearing a lot of, good, I like that, Chrissy. I love it, goosebumps. I hear a lot of people talking about 5D, right? Everybody's talking about fifth dimensional frequencies and we're all moving into 5D. Well, I might be one of those that deals with that a little bit differently because I feel we're all in this expansion. Do I feel like this, everybody's gonna all of a sudden just get it? Not from my experience of being on the planet for a very, very long time. So my feeling is like in everything else, it's an evolutionary process and that means that includes us right so that means that we as the way shores because again everybody's here in my view my feeling my intuitive sense is you guys are all light workers so you are going to be 
through the maze and there to greet people. And the most important part is to recognize, hi Tina, thank you. Thanks for coming. This is another friend from TikTok. This is wonderful and from Canada is to reach out, help those come in because everybody's going to be coming in at their own pace. We, we, and I'm, I'm just as guilty of this. I want everybody to wake up right now and I'm always sharing information and I'm always here, here, learn this, do this, da, 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 because I've got tips and tools and treasures and stuff galore because I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And recognizing that everybody has to do it at their own pace is really important. So once we are in that place of awakening, again, I will add this into the 5D, I'll go back to that. We greet everybody as they move through the process and into their, their own personal awakening, their own spiritual ahas because really what all of this is truly big picture this is all about us coming to the acknowledgement within ourselves within the world around us that we are part of the system yes we are part of source but there is a, a divine consciousness that contains this this and has created this entire universe and the more we tap into that rather than losing godlessness God, in my opinion, is not a big enough word, but the more we recognize that spiritual component, that's what's going to change all the nonsense that's happening on the planet. We have to activate and recognize that spiritual component within ourselves. So back to 5D. From my experience, I wrote a book about soul rays. It's called Soul Rays. Uh, discover the vibratory. Can't even say it. Discover the vibratory frequency of your soul. Wrote this back in 2012. And it's just as applicable today as it was then or 100 years ago because it's understanding the vibration of our soul frequency. And we as a consciousness, hi Julie, how are you? We as consciousness move through time and evolution. So if we go back in time, our evolutionary processes, we've had to go through the red energy field which is our root chakra which is tribal which is survival which is uh, learning about tribe and and connectivity and who we can rely upon is you know where our fear is in sense of survival think about if we go back into the history of humanity it's pretty easy to figure out where that came from the next one is the orange frequency where people started to develop more of their intellect and started building more more towns more expansiveness into culture and developing their their child's their childlike self because think about when the early days we didn't think about nurturing our kids we were just thinking about warding off the saber tooth you see what i'm saying so now for the last sorry i got a tickle in my nose folks for the last how many thousands of years we have been in the solar plexus we've been in yellow frequency what does that mean that means that we have been in in Self-confidence, self-esteem issues, and willpower. This is also about over, overpowering others. Think about our world leaders today. So many of them are all about overpowering other people, other nations. So this has been a process in time of, of I know this is kind of crazy because there is no such thing as linear time, but in our concept of linear time of evolution we have been in the yellow frequency okay that's third chakra that's solar plexus okay the next frequency up in our evolutionary step is the heart chakra right it is the it's love it's uh, unconditional love it's expansiveness it's moving out of anger it's moving into relationships with all species the planet the animals the plants, everything. That is the next evolutionary step. So this is the connecting element. The, the bridge is the fourth dimensional aspect. It's our heart. And fifth dimension is our throat. And this is what they keep talking about. Well, to get to that level in consciousness, again, this is my perception. And if you disagree with me, that is totally fine. This is from, again, years of working with thousands of people this is from downloading a lot of information this has been working with healing modalities this is just my perception again you don't have to believe me but i'm sharing my thoughts is that fifth dimensional frequency the higher dimensional beings that live in that 
vibration are more light body they they have form yes but they are not as dense as we are and I don't know about you but anybody walking around out there they don't look like they're walking around in light bodies in my estimation doesn't mean we don't have those on the planet I'm sure we do however most of us are still in our dense bodies so in my view of being in the maze and walking on top and being in the field of potentiality is that we really are moving as we moved out of Pisces and into Aquarius we have moved into that heart chakra now what does this mean this means we have an opportunity now and for the next 2,000 10,000 whatever time frame is going to take us to really embody this and it'll probably be a good 10,000 years to get everybody through that rat maze think about it to get everybody through the maze because if we're up here and we're welcoming everybody in like a race and it's not a race so you get what I'm saying as they come through oh you can't see my hand sorry as they are coming through it's going to take a while because there are a lot of people that are so stuck in their fear so as we are stepping into this heart chakra into this love vibration all we have to do is look at ourselves and look around and see how many people are actually vibrating putting out the frequency of love and I would say most of us do a good job of trying but other times we fail and that's where we are right now we are coming from the heart or moving sorry moving into this heart chakra so that we can expand and understand and really deeply dive into the concept of love we've learned the other aspects like I said uh, survival we have learned about family we have learned about sex and procreation and children we have been learning about empowerment and disempowerment and our own self-confidence and our self-esteem how many people most people let's just go there have issues with self-confidence and self-esteem and the reason is is this is what we are do doing as a group consciousness right now this group uh, evolutionary phase is we are going through this third chakra dy dynamic which is yellow that's the color of it and we're moving into green so this is really important for everybody to really tap into is that we're coming or we're learning how to tap into the heart for me that is fourth density now this could be a bridge to the fifth dimensional frequency however if I were to look at humanity as a whole watch the news watch the politicians watch anybody neighbors bickering with one another people online bickering, bickering with other a lot of hate spewing not thinking we're getting it yet so does that mean we are going to tap into this fifth dimensional frequency yet mm, I'm a little skeptical and I am the biggest optimist there is Every, you know the people who know me in the chat they know I am the eternal optimist I'm also uh, I don't want to say a realist I'm a realist too but I'm really not it's, I know that sounds kind of wishy-washy my point is recognizing what is is our opportunity to change it because when we really look at where we are personally so that's how we change the rat maze so with that my invitation to you in addition to the rainbow healing is to go within to that third chakra okay third chakra solar plexus when you're in that place I want you to really feel okay how confident you are how full of self-esteem you are how vibrant you are from that level and if you have some weak places okay think about this where are your weak places that means you're still in the rat maze of fear no it means that you're in this expansion of yourself and uh, learning to recognize where your hiccups are okay so within that solar plexus area take time to say okay yeah I'm a little uncomfortable here I'm, I'm not comfortable in my body a lot of people have issues with their physicality a lot of people have issues with not loving their body so I'm going to adjust myself here with their bodies that's a really big one within the solar plexus and as we age oh, it's so much fun as we age then we also have to deal with our self-confidence are we still viable do we still have value are we still an important piece in humanity of course everybody is but again it's something that we all have to deal with within ourselves am I comfortable in work am I confident in work 
Am I confident? Do I have self-esteem in attracting a partner? Am I comfortable and confident within a, a relationship itself? When you look at yourself and see where your weaknesses are, and again, third, uh, third chakra is about uh, insecurities. And what do we do? We stuff food. All we have to do, again, I can't speak to the rest of the world, but I can speak to America. Yes, it's our food and our diets and all of that, but we have so many people, so many people that are overweight today, excuse me, that tells you a lot about self-confidence and self-esteem because, and I'm not trying to pick on people with weight. Everybody who knows me in the chat knows that's not true. This is about doing what's right for ourselves, doing what's right for our bodies, really, really putting our hand over food and say, does this nourish and, and fuel my system, okay? Because when we're not conscious, trust me, we're still in that rat maze. We're still down in the labyrinth. And see, thank you, Robin. Thank you for sharing that. And, and that's what we do. We literally pat ourselves because our self-confidence is not there. Again, when you recognize that, that means you're in the maze. This is not trying to point fingers at people that are overweight or that are struggling. It's a matter of recognizing our habit patterns that we can change them so that we can be the best that we can be so we can help others. Does that make sense? This is about service to self, service to others. Very important. So that thir third chakra density, 3D density, has been compounded by our food sources, by the chemicals in the air, the chemicals in the soil, the, the chemicals in our water. That also adds a density to our body that is discordant. And then when we add in toxic foods, more uh, toxic energy and discordant uh, imbalances in our frequencies, and we are not in alignment then. So my invitation, again, to get out of the rat maze is to be very mindful moving out of this third chakra density to move into the, the place of love. You've got to love yourself enough to do it, right? You have to love yourself physically, mentally, emotionally enough and come from that spiritual self. Because again, if your spiritual self, your higher self that lives always in the astral levels, we're here to talk to you, what would your spiritual self say? I love you to pieces. I love you over the moon and back. I love you across every galaxy and back. So why are you doing this to yourself? So very important invitation is to start being very, very mindful with this third density uh, reaction. You would think it'd be easy to love ourselves. Exactly. And it's not. So that's why I want you to really dial into this because what this does, when we focus on this, this allows us to move up into this heart chakra, the next density, the fourth density. It is a location of frequency. It's a vibration. And this vibration for us, lucky us, is love. How exciting. This is a fantastic opportunity for all of us. So invitation, invitation, invitation is to be so mindful. Pay attention. Really Every single minute, we, I mean, we tend to do really stupid stuff. We, we let our minds go. We go into the fear. We go into indoctrination. Love you too, Tina. We, we do all this crazy stuff. And then we eat unconsciously or we say things unconsciously. Remember the book, The Four Agreements, right? The Four Agreements. And I can't remember what all four of them are because that just came into my head. But one of them is to speak impeccably, you know, be impeccable with your word. Fantastic. Because that keeps us in, starts cleaning out that third density. And then the other one is to not take anything personally. That's also 3D energy, right? When we learn to not take things personally. And I'll give you an example. Uh, a friend of my younger son, that guy right there, he is at a real crossroads in his life. It's fascinating to see how people are dealing with what's going on with all the, the nonsense out there. And his experience with it has actually been fairly traumatic. He got kicked out of his place. He takes on the victim mentality. He has embroiled himself into BLM and Antifa. The, he's in trouble with the law right now. Not a good space, okay? So what that is is that third chakra that's really out of, out of alignment. And... My son stepped in and said, I will listen to you, but I'm not going to let you come stay with me because I don't want that energy in the house. 
very important to draw the line and to set your boundaries and also recognize how everybody deals with this density right now from their own viewpoint. And that's why it is so important. Well, I'm going to send this, this young man love so that he can start to see his way out of it. But when we take the time to recognize what we do in situations, we can choose the right road or we can choose the wrong road. He obviously took the wrong road if he's in trouble with the police. Okay, so my point is, is the more we recognize that what our habits are, how we deal with any kind of situation from a place of, of discernment. I think discernment is really, really important. And then that goes into any kind of situation and back to our physicality is discernment with what we put into our food, uh, into our bodies. Food is so important. It's a vibrational frequency as our, our bodies. And we want our foods and our bodies to an, be in alignment with one another when they're in alignment because the food feels right within our psyche. You can feel it. You can feel it in your hands if you take the time. Because again, you guys are here. You're light workers, so you can feel these things. When you take the time to do this, then you shed the unwanted emotions that have been trapped on your body. You let those go. Your body becomes more energized. You become more clear-headed. And guess what? That means you're on top of the rat maze, and we are able to push the walls down and be in that field of potentiality so that you then have the ability to create exactly what you want. Okay, and what that means is helping others too, because when we create what we want, that really, you can feel it in your heart, you go to a place of service. So the next thing with that, moving into this heart, yeah, exactly, shadow work, coming out of the third density into the fourth density energy of the heart, we have to look at our mental body. Where are your thoughts? Where are your thought projections? Where are you focusing your time? What are you thinking about as you go to sleep? What do you think about when you wake up? Think about that. Because we instantly go to our falls. I have to do this today. Da, 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 da. If you set your alarm five minutes earlier so you can move into that peaceful energy and you come from, again, this place of love, excitement, great expectation of what magic is going to come your way this day, that day, the next day, it's going to change the vibration and frequency not only of your mental body, but that then spins out into the physicality. It has been proven through brain waves that, brain waves, I can say that, that when we think positively, our brain waves shift. So again, this is another way to uh, propel us from being in the rat maze in third density, because we are coming out of it, we're not out of it completely yet, is that then it allows us to mentally start focusing on what it is that we desire. Start learning something new, something you've always wanted to learn. Now is an opportunity. Everybody's home. Pick a book. You can do it on Kindle. You can do it on Audible. You can pull one from your library. Go to your library. They'll still send you books. There's so much free information online. Do some discernment work with all the, the nonsense that's going on out there. And trust me, I've been buried in nonsense because I'm an information junkie. So mentally, think about your mental body. Again, we are moving out of the rat maze. Very important, but nobody's going to do this for you. No doctor, no school, no politician, no government. It's up to you. You're in charge. You are the light. You are the answer to your problems. It's just the way it is. Of course, we can help. We can give out helping hand, but with the bottom line, it always comes back to you, comes back to me, comes back to each of us. So then we have... We, we talked about the physical body, the mental body. So now the emotional body. Okay, third chakra. Again, we want to move out of the rat maze. And think about, if you think about a rat maze, I, for whatever reason, I kind of think of it as yellow because of a cornfield, because we at this time of year and harvest and we have the mazes for the kids and they're usually cornfields. Corn is yellow. Yes, there's white, but you get what I'm saying. So in this, it's perfect, perfect time to be doing this in my mind with the harvest full moon coming up this this week. So yellow, emotion, fear, fearlessness, fearfulness, self-esteem, self-confidence. Where are your emotions buried within you? And trust me, that's why we're here in third density. We are here to really experience and express emotion. So the more you can tap into where you are blocked emotionally, 
that's going to lighten the load and allow the energies to flow within your body up into this fourth chakra within your body, which then mirrors the fourth density that we are in. We are literally we've opened the door. It, we tapped into it initially in 2012, at least started the portal. This year, as we moved into the age of Aquarius, we anchored in in, I think it was May, when Aquarius went into Taurus, which then anchored the Earth energies of, of Aquarius into the planet, which again, we're moving into that energy field of unity and global consciousness and love. So the more we do our own homework, the more we accelerate the growth of the planet. That's why it's so important to do our own work. Not always fun, right? Shadow work is not always fun. But if we imagine it as Halloween, then we can make it fun. So again, you're pulling up the, the insecurities within yourself. And it, it could be from anything within your lifetime. It could be your childhood from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. It could be a death in your family at 50 that triggered in the insecurities, the emotional insecurities. So invitation, do the shadow work. Not always easy. You can do this in, in a multitude of ways if you're not familiar. Many of you are. I'm, I I'm, should never assume I've said that before. That the emotional work, go. you can do this by tapping into the EMT. You can go into emotion, uh, emotional freedom technique. That is a great way to tap into your emotions and clear out. If you don't know about it, I'm not going to go into it. Not my job, but you can look it up. Uh, emotional freedom technique. It's very, very beneficial. It's body work, it's energy work, and it does its magic, which is a great thing to do. And then the other thing is to meditate, visualize. I am a visualizer. I have this meditation for me is all about visualizing. Now, everybody's different. I would invite each of you to create your own happy space and tap into that as regularly as you can. And when you go there, add details into your happy space that only you know about and invite only those in your world that you want to have in your happy space for example in my happy space i have animals and i have them named they're part of my animal totem and that's my happy space and then i can go in and just add things add details it's a mind exercise and it works and it's fun and it's clearing. You're clearing out things as you do it. As you move things out of your visualization, you're moving things out of your body. You're moving things out of your mental and your emotional and your physical body as you do this. The other thing too is back to my book, uh, Soul Frequencies, uh, Discover the Vibratory Frequency of Your Soul, Soul Race, is to get in the habit when you go to bed, when you wake up, when you pee. You don't have to know the, the vibrate color yet of your soul ray but in the meantime you can tap in by and I'm sorry I'm looking at the center of the camera anyway so I can show you this is to literally dial in all of this so that you are pointing to your higher self aligning all your chakras your elbows are together and align your energies and then see yourself in the circle of light above you below you around you boundaries intact because they're are so many things that are negative today that can be overwhelming, that can be distressing, that can take you out of your light. For example, I told you I was talking to my friend today, and I have to say, I've known her for 30 years, and it was it, it was disheartening to see her so caught in her own fear that then a part of me put my foot out the, of my soul ray light, outside my circle of light. And then you're kind of going, well, this doesn't feel very good. Once you get in the habit of being in this alignment, you never want to be out of that alignment because things then line up. That's again, it's like being on top of the maze and being able to walk out into that field of potentiality. It is a fabulous space and place to be. So if you get into the habit, again, you can check out my book, Soul Race, Discover the Vibratory Frequency of Your Soul. I've got it really cheap. You know, you can download it really cheap. It's not about making money, folks. This is about sharing the information that is life-changing. Because when you get in the habit of being in your light, then you have the ability to come from a place of mindfulness, uh, a place of love within yourself, a place of 
what I would say being surrounded by a spiritual presence, always feeling protected and loved and nurtured. And that in itself is a wonderful place to be, especially when we are locked down and are alone. For those who are, you are locked down and are alone, this is a wonderful way to get in the presence of divine consciousness so you never ever feel alone you never there's no reason for fear because you're in this space of connectivity so with that then when you tap into this and it allows then that third chakra density to move up and stay how cool is this into the fourth dimensional frequency now again there are those people that are out there all top psychics from all around that are uh really tapping into this five dimensional fifth dimensional energy 5d and i think it's great i have looked at it and for me i still feel we we have to go through the heart to get there now some say we can move through it really quickly and get there well okay that sounds great and wonderful and fine however i'm a bit skeptical knowing the human race because we are not embodying love we have to put the love hat on folks and really make it a priority every single day to move into these higher dimensional realms. There was something that I heard, heard that the, the, the souls in the higher dimensional realms would not think about being isolated. They would not think about not loving each other. They would not think about spending all their time on their phone or on computers or in technology because they are much more in tune with each other and connectivity and sharing and growing love between them and expanding their particular universe. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not thinking we're quite there yet. So that's why I'm saying for me, I, I, I can talk 5D terminology. I can go there and then it makes me sound cool. But honestly, I am more of the, the heart chakra density, the 4D moving through the densities. For those who are unfamiliar, you can always look up the Law of One. The Law of One is some amazing material that was channeled back in the 80s. And it, is, it comes from ancient texts. I mean, we're talking 50,000 years ago, ancient information, maybe even longer, probably longer. I mean, honestly, we've been around for billions, billions, folks billions of years so I know that's kind of a tough one to believe but with that being said sorry my phone is doing its goofy dance I don't want to be seeing the goofy dance so with that being said that when we tap into this element within ourselves we share the love so I invite all of you to really think about that and again you don't have to believe me you can totally tap into the 5d but Look into the law of one. You might go, hmm, hmm, maybe there's some truth in this. So I invite, we've got 45 here, and I've got a few minutes left in my hour. It, does anyone out there in the chat tonight have any questions that you might want to throw my way? Now, it could be something personal. It could be something on the bigger picture. It could be, you know, about what we're talking about, the rat maze and where we are as consciousness. Thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate that. Um, it can be about whatever you want because that's what I love I love the interaction of people knowing that you guys are in the chat makes it so much different for me I don't know how people just talk to a screen I wouldn't do very well with that so any questions anybody can type me we got a few minutes if you just type in a quick question I would be happy to answer it now something else I want you to think about this is kind of fun about the rat maze while I wait if anybody has any questions think about this uh, can you tell me where to find the Law of One? I've looked and couldn't find it. Great question. The Law of One is, um, again, under the, the channelings of Ra, you know, like Ra the God. And then there was a book, now that you ask me that, it's probably up here somewhere. There was a book that I had gotten back in the 90s of, uh, I, I might have to put it up on the, on the page I can't remember the name of it it also talked about the law of one but you look into best thing to do keep your energy in check during this time great sassy britches thanks dear great question love you is um and I'm getting the feeling here is my cat reincarnated it's okay great questions 
So back to the Law of One, look up Ra, the teachings of Ra, and they actually are available on, on Audible. And so you can dial into Audible and look that up. It's just a different way of looking at the universe as a whole. So again, in the reason I bring this up, the Law of One, it goes into fourth density, which resonates with me, right, rather than this 5D. And I'm, and I'm going to answer those questions in just a second. I know to be true that there has been misinformation that has been, has been put into the field of consciousness on purpose to see what we do. You know, whether it be the FBI, CIA, I don't care who it is, has put out misinformation to lead us down different corridors. And I think there has been misinformation that was definitely uh, perpetuated into the new age group. And I feel it started back in the 60s with the drugs that were put in, you know, think about all the, the hippies that were all of a sudden had all this LSD. Where do you think that came from? Guess what? It came from the CIA. So you think about all of the things throughout the last several decades that have gotten us to where we are today. The misinformation to me is this 5D consciousness. So now what uh, Sassy Brish has just asked is what can we do to keep our energies up? I think that's a really valid question because again, if you find yourself in the rat maze, down on, you know, literally in the thick of things, go, oh, that's right. I always have in my bag of trips, tricks and throw your magic rope up and climb to the top of, in your mind, the top of the wall. And then look down and see all those souls that are still scrambling, that are cranky, that are angry, that are fearful. And you can take a deep breath. And again, you can walk in your mind's eye to the end of the maze and get out of it into that field of potentiality and you do this again by standing in your light making sure your light is above you below you around you with your boundaries up and when you do that again if you know your color vibration fantastic if you don't make sure that it's white light and then always in your mind create patterns like i said an exit pattern out of the stress and the turmoil see yourself out of it you can see yourself on top of a mountain. You can see yourself sitting by a peaceful ocean. I don't care what it is. It's visualizing your way out of the nonsense. That's what I really believe all this hype and stuff is, is nonsense. I'm sorry, but that's just my happening tomorrow, Wednesday, been mentioned. No, it has not. Thank you for that. I'm going to bring that up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tina, you're awesome. So again, keep your energy vibration up. Visualize yourself out of the rat maze. See yourself in your light. Start thinking positive things, even if it's something simple as, I think I'll blow some bubbles today. I mean, I know that sounds dorky. However, anything you can do to take yourself out of the fray. Another thing I do is I have a playlist, a happy playlist that I turn on and just sing, and that takes me out of the fray. Whatever you can do to shift your vibrational mood is the key. Sometimes putting on a rom-com is it. Sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's taking the time to have a cup of tea and just stare outside. Go sit under a tree. All of these are ways to keep your vibration and energy higher and more connected to source and also connected to Gaia. We have to send love and energy and light to Gaia. So important. So important. So great qu question, Sassy Bridges. I really, really appreciate that. Next one was from Chrissy. She inherited or her family got a puppy and she wanted to know if it was her cat. For those who are not familiar with this concept, our animals can come back to us because they are also like us in an uh, a reincarnational cycle of evolution so that we are always moving up the evolutionary level of consciousness. I mean, if we go back in time, if you look at, uh, we'll use animals as our, as our example. If you think about when animals were brought into the home, their consciousness level was not where it is today because they have grown and expanded and evolved as well. So when they have the opportunity to reincarnate into our lives back into a body, they do choose those that they love, especially if we are in alignment. Many of you probably have seen the movies, A Dog's Life, and I don't know what the second one's called with Dennis Quaid, really speaks to this, this theory. I do believe that Dogs and animals, horses can interchange. I do believe that they uh, can, excuse me, <clears throat> can stay with the same animal vibrational frequency and evolve with them and come back to 
be the best horse they can ever be, be the best dog until they get to that place where they're going, maybe we're going to try human. Now, what's very interesting along this line, and Christy, I will get you to answer that question, I promise, is this. I hope and pray that every one of you is willing to evolve and expand your beliefs. So many people get so rooted into a certain doctrine of belief or faith or religion. Spirituality, like every, every other level in reality, is expanding. And the reason I bring this up is if you'd asked me, 10 years ago, if I felt that animals evolved into people, I would have said no, because there are a certain vibratory frequency they're going to hang out there. However, I'm always open to change my thought process, expand my thinking, tap into other things. And I do feel that animals can evolve into people. And then there's always that concept that maybe a person wants to be a cow. Uh, I have a tough time with that, but it could, it could be possible. In my world, anything is possible. So with that said, back to Chrissy's question, is this puppy her past kitten or cat that she lost? And I'm just checking into the energy field of that animal. And I'm getting a very resounding yes, Chrissy. So yes, there's this definite family connection with this pet, this, this special dog energy frequency, cat energy. So you're probably going to see some cat uh, characteristics come forth because dogs and cats are very different and yet they can be very similar. You're welcome, Chrissy, you're so welcome. So very fun question, I like that. And then Tina from Canada asked if I had mentioned the world meditation tomorrow and I honestly had not and I appreciate that. And I honestly don't know, Tina you might have to remind me of the time. I remember I've shared it online but I'd forgotten the time tomorrow. Days right now, I don't know about you guys, but my days are melding very, maybe too smoothly into one another they're kind of crazy right now and because i go to sleep thinking things feeling things downloading things i wake up doing the I, i'm so open it's very freeing fantastic tina i love this i'm downloading things and so because of it days flow into each other and i'm hoping that each of you are doing the same thing tina was just saying that it's so freeing it's fantastic so tina if you know what time the meditation is and if we don't know the time that's okay everybody can you know Go, go, daddy, Google. Google's kind of suspect, but, right, um, you can go through any of the search engines and find this group, World Meditation. Fantastic thing to do. We have the opportunity, folks, to change the vibration when we tap into this love within ourselves, back to staying and moving into that fourth density, heart-loving, evolving expansiveness. That is your job. That is your role. That is your job. And remember this. Every one of us here today, every one of us have chosen this. We have created this. We made this event happen. We made this opportunity happen. We're all being pushed through a keyhole of opportunity and change and growth and expansion. You chose this. I chose this. We created this environment together. If you know this to be true, then embrace it and say, okay, I'm in. What can I do to expand on that? That's why stepping out of the mat race is a mat race, the rat maze, got those backwards, is so essential to your well being, my well being, because what happens to you happens to me, because guess what? We are all connected. So the more I put out love, the more you put out love, and we all then join in this group, shifting. And from my intuitive, very strong point of view, and I know that you've probably heard this from others, we are not going back. Uh, just Google, I just Google 1749 Eastern, EDT, EDT, that's not Eastern, so 1749, so fantastic, this, they did this back in June, and then there will be, I know, another one on the 21st of December, very big turning portal on the planet and the solar system, so something to, to think about, so again, I want everybody to think about moving into their heart, and tapping into this, this is your job should you decide to accept it. Now on a totally separate note, I'm going to segue for just a second. Because this is also an open invitation if you are at all inclined. I started a meetup group online. Uh, and you can go to meetup. But guess what? I just found out that meetup is also now being censored. Don't we love that? And so it may have been kind of squelched a bit. But I started a meetup gro group that 
is called Red Pilling the Great Awakening, and we are doing it on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. We are pulling in people from all over that are joining us, and then there will be a, a group that will also be in person. So if you are, wherever you are in the world, you have the opportunity to join this because this is what is more of what I would call the spiritual uh, conversation that is dealing with all the nonsense that's going on on the planet. Talking about the, the deep state, the Illuminati, the cabal, and the ABCDFG, that one, right? All of those things you can't say anymore on censored links. On a Zoom call, we aren't censored. Everybody is invited to participate and bring in information. And it, again, red pilling, pull in my name, red pilling, the Great Awakening, Central Oregon, because that's what the name is. But I saw we had some new members today. I just started this that are not from here. And this week's conversation is on the, the fires. And the fires that are primarily here in the West that have burned so hot. We are going to talk about everything from global warming to dues, which are direct energy weaponry systems, right? So, and arson. Most people don't want to go into that because that's too controversial. I will be there, Chrissy, and Chrissy's from Georgia. Thank you. I love that. So I want to thank everybody that is in my chat today. And does anybody have any other questions before I say goodnight? I can't believe it's to have 60 people. This is so exciting. Brand new on, on uh, YouTube. And I really am grateful for everybody being here. And I don't know if you're completely new to who I am. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Not YouTube. This is brand new. But the rest of it, I've been doing a very long time. You can check out my website if you want to know anything more about me. Any more questions? One more question. Anybody else before I say adieu? Oh, thanks, Tracy. I appreciate that. Okay, Chrissy, what's your question? Anybody else? Anybody new that's out there in the chat would like to throw something my way? Chrissy, oh my goodness. She just asked if she's pregnant. Oh my goodness. No, you're not pregnant. And that's a good thing. I'm telling you, that is a wonderful thing. I know some people I'd say that too. They would be disappointed. But in your case, no. I don't feel like you're pregnant. No, there's... We won't go into the whole female thing on live right now. But no, this is a good thing. You'll be happy that you're not. So yes, oh, few is right. Exactly. Anybody else have any other questions? Because this is what we did on TikTok. Everybody asked a thousand questions all night long. Very fun. So anybody else? Anybody brave enough to ask a question? And it doesn't have to be about who's going to win the election. It doesn't have to be about that, even though that's always an interesting topic. Anything else tonight before I say good night? And because again, thank you to everybody. I'm so excited. I am so grateful to all of you for being here. This really makes my evening. So, any more questions, folks? Anybody else? And I'm trying to think if there's, oh, I know what I was going to say. There was one more thing I wanted to say that was very important because that's why I have notes to myself, is when we are in, this is very, kind of fascinating information, back to the maze, okay? When we are in the, the maze, and I really like the word, the concept of the maze versus the labyrinth because I like lots of options because that's really what life is about, our options. I looked up what is it that calms mice down? Right, if they're they're stuck and they're in their their traps and they can't get out, what calms them down? Any ideas? I know you can't answer me. I wish you could. I wish everybody could talk. the The answer is our treats. How wild is that? Treats. So that's what calms rats down. Calls calms mice down when they are in a maze. So my invitation to you that you know people that are fearful that are caught in the nonsense that have consumed the fearful Kool-Aid, or if you're one of those, is to value a treat. Now, a treat doesn't mean you're gonna go get a chocolate cake and eat the whole thing. Not what I'm suggesting. A treat for me is actually a treat of time. So many people don't take personal time, so treat yourself, treat your friend, your family, whomever it is that's consumed the Kool-Aid, Treat them to time, time together, time to connect, time to communicate, time to love, time if it's just for you, maybe you just want to have time to read a book, time to, to stare at a tree or sit under a tree. Take that time. Give yourself that treat. 
because treats calm mice and we right now are in a lab <laughs> we're an experiment so uh okay we have another question i'm going to cancel it out my place of work good question i will come back to that in just a second so that is my invitation is to really tap into the treats in your life that you can do for yourself because that will calm you down and for me it's a cup of tea something very simple is a treat that's a treat so whatever it is think about that when you're having a stressful moment take the time to breathe sugar-free chocolate there you go treats again treats so we just had another question from the the chat and I appreciate that will inventory be canceled where she works and that's a very valid question because things are being stuck right now things have gotten halted for whatever reason well we all know the reason well schools aren't open restaurants aren't open well there goes our food supply and then if businesses aren't buying and people aren't buying and we only have a few places to buy them from all of a sudden it, everything is locked down and or they're being hijacked very interesting one of the, the lady I worked or talked with earlier today her all their supplies had been literally hijacked on a ship from God knows where probably China I don't know someplace they were getting inventory in and that got hijacked so they were short of supplies she works in the educational system so let's look at your inventory Tina and let's see what you have going are they going is it going to be canceled I don't feel like it's going to be canceled however I do feel there's going to be I'm hearing the word thwarted meaning that that you're going to get some enough to get you by a trickle but I doesn't feel like you're going to be getting everything and you guys what this is if you look at this in a positive it's an opportunity to utilize your your ingenuity your creativity okay if we can't get that what can we do instead how can we uh, pull our resources how can we pull our brains together and shift how we do things I mean think about it every time we've had a mass breakthrough in things it's always come from a challenge it's actually come from the shadow side we talked about that last week our greatest movements forwards are from the shadow events and times in our lives so right now you're going to get some however there's going to be a little lag so again it's ingenuity time which is that's a good thing I mean I just I don't know about any of you who have heard of the movie thrive thrive 2 just came out if you haven't watched these movies I highly invite you to the there was a live party afterwards and there was a gentleman in don't quote me might be Zimbabwe who had created free energy they had no electricity in his his environment and he through his own creativity and ingenuity turned on the light and lit up this room brightly with lights and it's essentially free energy it's happening all over the world free energy is going to be available again when we come to crisis moments we create so again this is third density third chakra crisis shadow moving into that love vibration so that we can move into a higher reality of unconditional love so that's my invitation okay check where you are not giving unconditional love to those around you where is your love thwarted okay because the more we offer up love guess what the flow of inventory the flow of thought starts to open up again okay because all this is the the backup of inventory is a a mirror into the block up blockage within ourselves for example like Ho'oponopono where we have to go within ourselves to heal those on the outside because we have those blocks within ourselves so my invitation Tina and for anybody else who is having challenges or blocks or stoppages at work or within your relationship or whatever go within yourself and see where the blockages are to free those blocks and see how it mirrors then in your external world again that's another way of getting out of the, the maze right it's another way of stepping out and walking on top of it so you can get to the other side and into the field of potentiality does that make sense you literally come up by shifting your perspective so any other questions folks is very fun I am I can't believe we're still here this is really incredible so one more minute and then I am going to say adieu because for those who know me I do trampoline I do the trampoline at night weird crazy I know but it's just so freeing there's my treat is a trampoline so anybody else last minute question other than that 
I invite you to think about treats. I think I invite you all to stay in your bubble of light, to stay in that alignment with who you are and why you are down in the maze and how to stay out of it, right? Get, to get your ropes going, getting on top of the maze so you can be up here, be so you can walk into that field. And I'm just going to see if there's anything else that in my little... Oh, that's one other thing I want to leave you with. Truths and untruths. There are so many untruths. That's why I shared it. This is from my perspective that it's fourth dimensional because of love. Just because of that. If you want to be in 5D, that's cool. I'm going to kind of concentrate on my love thing. So again, truths and untruths. You can hear truth. And so my invitation is to all use very discerning ears and eyes and your nose. Everything in terms of what you eat. In terms of what you hear. In terms of what you see. So you can discern the truth and what is in the most highest vibration for you because when you do that you share that with everybody else so with that everybody i will be here next monday night 7 p.m pacific and if these continue to do as well as this one did this is so exciting we will do this more often as the weather gets or as we go into darker nights right when it's still sunny i love being outside and then for those who want to join us wednesday night it is at 6 p.m pacific again meetup.com the great it's red pilling the great awakening my name is on it candia sanders oh thank you tina thank you for showing for showing up tonight i really appreciate it and then if you want to join us wednesday night we would love it and then other than that hopefully i will see you next monday with a new topic and if you have any questions with that